sledgehammers, chainsaws, guns, RC cars from your nightmares. So I've been playing The Division for a while. Well, The Division 2. Eh, about a week or so now, and I feel like I'm obligated to talk about it. The problem with that is that in the years since I graduated high school, I have slowly worn out my filter. You know, the one that discerns what to say and what might be inappropriate. So I suppose this is your warning. I'm probably going to talk to you like you're an old friend, which means I'm not entirely sure what I'll say. So if you get offended, disgusted, or are someone with a slightly puritanical disposition, this might not be for you. Okay, so The Division 2 follows a story of the first game, but to say that it follows a story is like saying that an adult parody film follows the story of the source film. It would be more accurate to say that The Division 2 is set in the same universe as the first with phoned in cameos. And like the first, it is a third person shooter that tries its hand at tactics. So let's start simple. On Xbox, I found that the graphics were in areas lacking. And that's not something I usually care to mention because so long as the graphics as a whole are on par with the rest of the industry, then I'm happy. I try not to be that pretentious guy bitching about technical shit because let's be honest, a lot of gamers just care about how fun it is. Sure, a large portion are interested in the hardware and performance aspects, but there are people out there who are a lot more knowledgeable on that than I am. I drifted a bit there. Um, I had issues with things not rendering in until I was very close. This wasn't enough to annoy me, but it was more of like something that I just didn't care for, like not liking the interface buttons or knobs in your new car thinking that they're ugly or insufficient is really just too small to be an annoyance. The Division 2 is a fun game at times, and when it is, and you are in the heat of an intense battle, it is just downright almost criminally fun. But it also has its drawbacks. I found the world to be a beautiful place in a strange way that stroked my post-apocalyptic imagination. The problem with the world was that the developers never truly committed to depicting this terrible reality. They set up disgusting and disturbing scenes, but never really follow through with them and make them as truly horrific as they should be. And it kind of came across like they wanted to have an intense game without the corresponding necessity. When everything was explored and the worst of the game was seen, it really solidified my opinion that in essence they wanted to make a hardcore porn with softcore rules. Um, the world tells really the only story there is to the game due to its woeful lack of cutscenes for whatever reason. I think the entire game has between like maybe like 8 and 10 if I was guessing. I didn't count but I would say probably somewhere between 8 and 10 cutscenes and they were usually after completing or starting a settlement. The story is supposed to come in through radio briefings and recordings you find in the game and echoes which are recordings that take you back in time to a still holographic image 3D assembled around your character that you can then walk around and take a look at as the audio plays and it kind of tells you who's talking but that's it there's nothing remotely resembling a cohesive well thought out story and this is such a disappointment because I wanted to be impressed and I was just ended up trying to let down I mean, I didn't give a shit about my character. He never spoke and had absolutely no character arc. I've seen some movies based on Tom's books, but there was just nothing to latch on to and say, okay, this is a character going through some shit. Halo did the stoic but not entirely silent warrior right, you know, because the story was built around Master Chief, and when he spoke, it had meaning and weight because he didn't say much for, what, the first three games? Here, I never felt compelled or that the game challenged me emotionally or morally. While not an open-world game, Spec Ops The Line was a third-person shooter that takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting, but the stark difference is, is that Spec Ops The Line toyed with the gamer's morality and made the gamer do horrible things thinking that they were the right choice. Open your eyes, Walker. I need you to see what you've done. That's white phosphorus. Yeah, I know what it is. You've seen what this shit does. You know what we you can't might not have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. Why? 
You brought this on yourself. We were helping. This is your fault, God damn it! Stop right there, Hugo! What it is! You wouldn't we listen! We have a choice! He turned us into fucking kill! That's enough, Sergeant! No! No! Open your eyes, Walker. I need you to see what you've done. And was, in the end, a total mindfuck of a game that explored the depths of human savagery. The Division 2 really could have been that. But the problem is that your character is a good guy just mowing down bad guys. That's all he is. You go here, you mow down the bad guys, you complete your objective. There, there's absolutely no arc. He is just a steady force. A uh, quick side note. If you have not played Spec Ops The Line, do it. And if you like it, don't read the meaning that uh, the developer released because it just sort of ruins the mystery of the game, or at least it did for me. Anyway, had Ubisoft accepted the world that they were portraying was violent and extremely harsh and actually thought about the character arc and making a game that toys with the gamer's morality and emotions, and to use the example from before, threw away the soft core rules, then we'd be honestly having an entirely different conversation. The game, on the other hand, is a bit of a mixed bag, you know? Uh, it's not your typical tactical shooter type of game that you get in another release from this developer that was also built under Tom's name. That would be Ghost Recon Wildlands. Ghost Recon, to its credit, or lack thereof, is not a perfect game. It suffers from a boring experience after completion and has very little replay value. But it is a tactical shooter that would often allow me to decide how I wanted to attack. If I wanted to sit up on a hilltop and snipe, I could do it. If I wanted to go in silent and take them all out, I could do that. If I wanted to sit up on a hilltop and just pound them with mortars and artillery, I could do that too. But I digress. You can see that the Division 2 tried to be tactical, but their effort, well, it was fake and superficial. It, it felt a bit like I was buying a Fleshlight Girl's Fleshlight. Sure, it has some great components that are really fun, but at the end of the day, it might look like the private bits of a mattress actress, but that's it. Leaving me giving myself a fairly unenthusiastic handy that seemed to be better purely by comparison to the way it was going down before. The point is that The Division 2 tried to trick me. It tried to trick me with all the old mechanics from Gears of War. You know, with the take cover and blind fire and show me where I'd be running if I broke cover. You know, and then they tried to toss in some other stuff like allowing me to transition from one side of an object to another without having to get up and expose my character. But, like a fleshlight girl's toy, it's a superficial attempt. It looks good and it feels great for a while until I realize that I'm still doing the same thing I was doing before, just in a new and fancy way. And aside from its superficial changes, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. The truth be told, The Division 2 is not tactical in any way. They made it an arcadey type of experience with numbers falling off enemies when you shoot them, but I can almost live with that. Some of the super realistic combat games fucking suck. So sure, I like some of the elements of a slightly more fun, light-hearted combat game. The biggest problem from a combat standpoint is that they think that you need to have different classes of enemies in every single game. As if being a lone wolf wouldn't be hard enough if they just flooded the zone with enemies. No. In The Division 2, they still like to outnumber you, and do so with enemies that will take an entire magazine to dispatch. But then they always like to throw in some sort of prick that always will run at you. This could be some asshole with a cattle prod or an RC car with circular saws or people or RC cars with C4 strapped to them and then you have drones. Some of the enemies, you could probably shoot them with like an M1A2 Abrams battle tank and they'd, they'd just shrug it off. No big deal. They didn't want the gamer to be able to slug it out with overly powerful bullet sponge enemies from a single position that on its own can be somewhat hard to defend because standard enemies do like to flank you when you're not paying attention. And 
these charging enemies was the single worst part of the combat experience in the game because they might have a boss enemy out there that I am trying to hold at bay because he's coming at me with a minigun or charging me with a sledgehammer while wearing a fucking surprisingly bulletproof suit and now I also got to worry about some asshole with a cattle prod who is also charging me or an RC car with C4 or someone strapped to you know C4 or any of the other things that I listed and it's just it's a pain in the ass it, it takes some of the fun away from it it's not like oh, oh I got this guy run at me it's son of a bitch can are you kidding me leave me alone you know and that's kind of one of the problems is that you know I really wanted a game that would have been kind of a fun combat experience in an urban type setting and this isn't it this is a somewhat fun combat experience with an arcade aspect in an urban like setting and I mean I I guess the best way to put it is I wish that it would have been a little bit more of a slightly ghost recon inspired game from a combat standpoint at least but with all that said I found exploring the city and playing the division 2 to be oddly addictive I found myself saying I wanted to get off but then sticking on for a while longer saying one more control point or one more mission the game gives the player a lot of places to explore and a lot of city to uncover and probably feels bigger because of a lack of cars but there's also no shortage of things to search and I love looking for new weapons and trying them out because sometimes that was the most interesting part of the game the hunt for new weapons and the fine-tuning of my loadout to have the best that I possibly could to go into these situations where then I'm going to get charged and I have to at least try to put them down as quickly as possible. Now I do wish that I would have been able to increase the weapons damage of the ones that I already have rather than continually getting more and more of the same weapon. It, it kind of got annoying after a while and sometimes I like to use weapons that I personally like in real life and after a while that weapons damage kind of gets outclassed by the enemy and it becomes completely obsolete and I it got a little annoying for me I mean there is like a retooling center that you eventually unlock but I couldn't find a way to retool the uh, the damage aspect of the gun so that kind of annoyed me a bit I kind of drifted there but when you complete the missions you still have plenty of side missions and odds and ends like control points territory controls and a like to keep you entertained for at least a while once you complete all three strongholds the world changes and since there's no story, I'm not overly concerned about spoilers, but let's just say that a new and powerful enemy arrives and you have to combat them. You lose all your control points and everything and you kind of start over a bit. And this is kind of where it gets annoying. So far, if I take a control point, eventually they take it back. And I get that this is meant to keep me busy after completion. It was actually rather annoying and felt just fucking futile. What's the point aside from maybe getting a powerful gun in the storage room? They just take it back and you can't make any headway and do the missions or anything else that's coming up in the world. You kind of have to just, after you know a while, just keep hitting the damn control points because they just keep taking them back. And it kind of just came across like a heavy-handed manner of keeping me busy that could have been toned down a little. But the extra missions and whatnot are fun. And if I had a complaint, it would have been better if they all weren't in the exact same spot as the first one. One thing I will say is that I love how they handled the supply drops, or whatever they're fucking called. Every game has to call them something different, but you can earn them fairly easily. And they tell you exactly what you're going to get. Usually it's a piece of gear and a gun. It appears that they leave most of your cosmetic items to, you know, being the paid drops and whatnot. And that's the best way to handle it because when I opened a crate, I never felt like I was gambling. I just felt a bit of anticipation as to what I'd get generally regarding the guns because that's what changes your gameplay experience more than anything else. All in all, The Division 2 is not perfect. It lacks story commitment to the world that they created. It has frustrating combat elements and post completion. It sometimes feels a bit like a rehash. I wish suppressors would allow me to take enemies down in a stealthy manner along with a silent takedown would also kind of been nice but at the same time it's addictively fun to play 
the way that the progression system works and the rank ups and looking for loot and guns will keep me entertained for at least a little while. I would say that all things considered, the Division 2 is worth a look, but I'm not entirely sure it's worth 60 bucks. Anyway, that is all. If you're the one person that watched this, I hope the language and dirty references didn't, you know, annoy you. It's just kind of the, the way I am, I suppose. Um, but until next time, have a great day.